So, let's go ahead and start with the first question. So, what is the difference between INTJ, NIFI, and ISFP, FINI? What is the difference between dominant NI and tertiary NI? So this is essentially just the question, um, how can we differentiate INTJs and ISFPs both being gamma quadrant? So the difference between INTJs and ISFPs, it can be hard to tell, especially if they're mature. Um, ISFPs are actually one of my favorite personality types to interact with, and I think it's because they, they're a lot like INTJs in that they're fiercely independent for the most part. And what I mean by this is like, if you look at the INTJ and the ISFP, they're the types who are like the least afraid of like being themselves and they tend to be unapologetically so. Now, this doesn't mean that they're going to do so at the social expense of others, because unlike the INTP and ISTP, for example, of the lower extroverted feeling, the lower or the, the, the FI valuing types, the INTJ and ISFP, because they're introverted dominant types with FI, are going to be types who value their own presentation of the self. And it's not that they're trying to do so at the expense of others. It's more so that they're they're doing it in favor of themselves. And that, that, that can seem almost contradictory because it's like, well, what's the difference between at the expense of others and in the favor of the self? And for FI, it's more like I'm doing this for me. And if that doesn't align with you, I'm sorry, but that isn't, it isn't my intention to like make you feel bad or make you look dumb or these sorts of things. It's more so my intention to remain authentic to myself. Whereas with the lower FE types, for example, you might find that they even try to purposefully off put others or they don't know that they're being off putting to others. I've seen a lot of FI types who can know that they're being off putting to others and be fully accepting of that, but it's not like they're intending to, but that kind of strays away from the, the point there with the ISFP you're going to find that they are far more willing to do that at the expense of any sort of relationship that might have a resource attachment to it. And what does that mean to it? Well, higher TE types tend to be very aware of the professional setting and social setting. So just as FE is aware of social settings in terms of like, they notice how everyone's feeling and how everyone's doing the social sphere, yada, yada, yada. The, the TE higher types tend to be aware of, like, the professional relationships between them and other people. Like, what can I offer this person and what can they offer me? And how should I act around them to make sure that that relationship is maintained in such a way that is beneficial in terms of resources to both of us? So an INTJ is probably going to be more willing to sacrifice identity aspects a little bit if it leads to them uh, having some sort of relationship with another person that is going to be mutually beneficial and that they're not going to sacrifice fi for fe but they are going to sacrifice it occasionally for te whereas with isfps you very 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 rarely find them sacrificing introverted feeling for the sake of extroverted thinking um, just as you're not going to find isfps sacrificing um like, like, you're also going to see more conflict on the NI and the SE with ISFP. Those middle two functions are going to be in conflict with each other. That's something that that is hard to understand with type because when you think of conflict, you think of your first and fourth function because you're like, oh, yeah, my, my first function is the, the strongest, my fourth is the weakest, so therefore they're battling. And in reality, it's not that they're battling. It's that it's just such a – it's a, a war in favor of your dominant function to the degree that your dominant function is overpowering your oppressed. So it's not, it's like there's not even a fight going on. It's like the big bully kid going up against the small kid. Where the real conflict is going on is your center two functions. Because these two are both equally valid in your psyche. They're both equally important to you. Despite the fact that we label one as secondary and tertiary, there's actually about an even balance of desire and need for both of these functions. So you're going to find conflict in how you approach these center two functions and for the isfp that's going to be in se and ni and you're going to find that the the isfp is going to be spontaneous to a point but also occasionally you might find themselves like feeling bad for their spontaneity because they have just a subtle ni recognition of the spontaneity but they're also not so afraid of spontaneity like the intj that they won't ever do it just as with the intj you're going to find a conflict between te and fi where they value the FI a ton, so they want to remain authentic, but occasionally they're going to sacrifice 2TE professionality, uh, but then they're going to feel bad about it. So that's really the 
the, the main difference between the ISFP and the INTJ, in my opinion, in terms of like, if you just want to look through the lens of functions, is that where, what are, what are they sacrificing and where are they sacrificing those things? So the second part of this question is what is the difference between dominant NI and tertiary NI? Uh, well, that kind of goes back to what I said, but this does further help answer the question. So dominant NI is going to be more passive. It's going to be more reluctant to share. So this is kind of weird because NI as young states and psychological types is the function that doesn't really like to share itself. It's the function that is like, I, I see what I see, but I can't explain what I see to others because they won't understand me. Uh, and therefore they learn to keep it in. Now, what's really interesting about ISFPs and ISTPs is that they don't keep NI in as much as the other types. And it's because they have tertiary NI and they, they really value it, but they don't feel this like secretive need about it in the same way. So you might find them a little bit more willing to talk about their NI perceptions if it's something that they're like FI interested in. There's a reason that we kind of joke that the ISFPs tend to be like, especially like girls and stuff tend to be into like witch culture and astrology and these sorts of things. It's because they have that like that lower NI value for these archetypes that they don't fully understand and they're more willing to show them. Whereas you look at like INTJs and INFJs and they tend to be like, oh, I like these things, but also I'm very careful about how I talk about them because I understand that the world around me might not recognize the value in these things in the same way uh, that I see them. So those are going to be the differences there.